Good day and welcome to the Sport Drive Show. Uh, I'm your host, Brian Munango. Unpacking the latest uh, sport news that is. Today is Black Friday. It's a good day. It's Friday. I hope everyone is having a good one. And with that, uh, without wasting any more time, let's dive into today's hit list. Deputy Minister of Sport Emma Kate Mahwamas has heaped praise on Namdia and the Namibian Hockey Union for working hard towards the development of hockey. Uh, Katema said this during an official awarding of national colors at the Namibian Sports Commission. Uh, at the occasion, Nam, uh, Namdia announced a sponsorship commitment of 445,000 towards Namibia's Hockey Fives team set to compete uh, at the African Cup of Nations tournament in Egypt from the 10th to the 15th of December. Here is what Khamas had to say. So, I'm excited to be here this morning. I would like to recognize the presence of uh, our Chief Administrator for the Namibia Sports Commission. I would like to recognize the presence of uh, the leadership of the Hockey Union, Mr. Greg, as well as uh, the Vice President and the manager that will be taking the team, and also the presence of um, our sponsor, uh, represented by Miss Beverly, and very importantly, the stars of the day, our athletes, and uh, the media. I'm excited to be here today, this morning, as uh, Mr. Muya was saying that it's, it's a very historic moment where we are seeing hockey transforming and not only doing the traditional way that we used to do. So as a Ministry of Sport, Youth and National Service, I'm delighted to be part of the shared efforts where we are seeing the vision to transform positively the lives of our young people, where we are giving them an opportunity to continue putting Namibia on the map, and particularly that we are witnessing our first ever fives going to represent us um, in Egypt and also to witness the generous support that we continue to enjoy from Namdia. I'm informed that as far as uh, Beverly has indicated that Namdia is really um, come on board to assist government, to assist the sports fraternity, to make it possible for us because as we always say, as government, as a ministry alone, we cannot do it alone by ourselves. I would like this to reiterate the commitment from the Ministry to provide an enabling environment for sports to thrive, for us to continue developing and to promote sport. As the Ministry that's entrusted with that responsibility, we obviously are intensifying our efforts to ensure that we go, we professionalize, because we all know that sports has always been for leisure, it has always been for by the way, but for now, we are really looking into ways that how can sports be one of the economic contributors. And partnership of this nature are very crucial with Namdia, especially for our athletes, as it also comes at the right time when we are embarking on professionalizing sport. It comes at the right time where as Namibia, as government, we are also promoting to use sport as a tool to unite the nation and to also you know, provide social cohesion. Although Namibians support many sporting codes, the economic uh, benefits do not reflect the same. And I think we got a lot of work to do. This requires collaborative efforts with corporates and private sectors to invest so that we ensure that we have more world-class sports facilities. We have our athletes performing at a international platform and not only participating but competing. Today we are witnessing a beautiful story that demonstrates that with partnership we can achieve better. We can develop our sports men and women who are putting Namibia on the map and at this point I want to pose as I'm immensely proud with what hockey is, is doing over the last few weeks if not few months. I recall just a few weeks ago, um, the Minister Honorable Agnes Chongarero received a team that came from Canada. Again, you know, putting Namibia on the map. We have seen the performance at the test series with South Africa. 
where I think it, the captain played her last match, right? Mm -hmm. I think she deserves a round of applause. <laughs> I, I also reminisce the, the performance of the, of the team during the 2018, that was in Germany, right? Yes. Yeah. So you see, I know my story, <laughs> I know my story. Yeah. So hockey, really what I'm trying to demonstrate is that you, you have you've proven yourself. And as a ministry, we continuously support you. And I'm very happy that we have support also from the private sector. I thank you very much, especially to the federation, to the coach and the management, because we know that athletes can only achieve this when there's dedicated leadership mm -hmm. behind the team. And I think you deserve a round of applause. <laughs> we appreciate the board of directors of Nandia for augmenting our, our efforts to provide our athletes with this opportunity, as I indicated, Please, uh, Ms. Beverly, pass our immense gratitude for the support. I know that you not only... Yes, well, uh, the sports promotion and management company Modi Sports MS will host the second edition of its Pro Beach Games at Long Beach on 26 November, that is, which is tomorrow. The winners of the volleyball competition will walk away with $3,000. The soccer champions will pocket $4,000. Uh, and the winners of the tennis competition will receive $3,000, while the rugby competition winners will win $4,000. That is, uh, we are using a format of three aside with one on the reserve for volleyball, five on-field players with two reserves format uh, for the rugby, touch rugby, that is, and not contact. Uh, this will be the same for the football tournament this time around. We introduced tennis, however, we might need to review or cancel it as responses have not been positive. It is something we would love to do and promote as much as possible, explained uh, Willibard Angula, the founder of the Modish sport that is. Well, the Demarine Premiership action resumes this weekend as Mali uh, Garizemo's young African travel to the coast to face Blue Waters and 11 arrows in what is expected to be feisty encounters. Young Africans are yet to secure points on the board, but will be hopeful to cause an upset at the Jan Vulcans Stadium. Uh, Coach Mali has insisted that his team is capable of collecting points ahead of the match, that is, while Black Africa FC, who are also desperate for points, will be in Valves Bay to play the two coastal giants. Meanwhile, African Stars and Okahanja United will also battle on Saturday at the Now Alp Stadium at 4 o'clock with most of the matches set to take place at 2 this weekend, uh, with the last games expected to take place at 5. Well, the pipeline is up next with an interview about the upcoming Sandman event, which begins early December. Jesse Jackson Karaitha chats to defending champions. Enjoy that. Flanked by two champions, of course, and what a time to be alive. I mean, in the presence of two heroes of a coastal town, I'm sure many people classify you as such. Well, it is the FNB Sand Man um, event that is slated for December, and that's what we are here to talk about. I'm joined by that is Mr. Marais, a champion of the male category, and Ms. Windish. Um, champion in the female category. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Jason. I'm going to start off with you, uh, Master Marais. Um, you have been a champion. You won the event last time around. Tell us the secret. 
That's the first question probably you were expecting as well. <laughs> I try to scare my competitors out of entering the event mm -hmm. before it happens. And in that case, you're secure to win. Uh -huh. All right. No, there, mm -hmm. are, there are athletes that I've not raced against in this country mm -hmm. that um, could prove to be a very difficult fight. Mm -hmm. And I believe that has been this, the story to my success. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, Consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency in training is, is all you is need all to, you to need. achieve this. Okay. Um, Ms. Windy, um it's the same question. Basically, that's the first question that I'm sure you expect. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so for me, it's um, go out hard, but enjoy the race. Enjoy every moment of it. Mm -hmm. um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. And yeah, I think the vibe of the event just pulls you through, especially on the run. Yeah, um, this involves a lot of conserving energy and all that. I'm sure of that because you have to swim and all that. Yes. But I want to know what kind of practices do you do actually to before, prior to the event that keeps you so fit in order for you to, to compete at such a high level? Well, I would recommend um, an experienced athlete, not necessarily someone that gets into triathlon or has been in triathlon for a long while, mm -hmm. but anyone who stayed active and wants to transfer to triathlon should do about 8, 9, 10, 11 hours a week, mm -hmm. um, sectioned off into the appropriate swim time, cycle time, run time. Um, that's what's necessary to complete a, a standard and ultra distance, I'd say. Okay. Um, Ms. Wintich, where do you practice? I mean, like, I know you compete at sea, but um, where do you c currently practice uh, throughout the year? Yeah, so the swimming, we are bound to swimming pools. Mm -hmm. um, the 25 meter pool at the Virgin Active Gym is probably the easiest place to practice. Mm -hmm. But then we also go to dams and swim there sometimes. But yeah, for swimming, open water swimming is a challenge. Yes, that's um, what I wanted to ask. Yeah. That, I mean, if you're training the, uh, yeah. using a swimming pool and now you're at open water, yeah. so for what's me, the difference? So for me personally, I'm um, from a swimming back background. I swam mm -hmm. as a teenager. Mm -hmm. So swimming is, for me, the easiest part of the triathlon. But I think for most other athletes, it is the most difficult and most haunting uh, part of the triathlon. All right. Um, I'll ask the same question yes. as Miraz. Where do you um, I hold your training? <laughs> I so also train at Virgin Active Gym mm -hmm. in Muromo, and I'm often the fastest swimmer in the pool until Benita shows up. <laughs> <laughs> so I can testify that she does come from a swimming background. Mm -hmm. um, it's much more fun to swim in open water because when you swim in a 25 meter, you have the uh, benefit of kicking off a wall every 25 meters that you don't have when you're in swimming in a, a, yeah. a triathlon event. Mm -hmm. You can't stop. Mm -hmm. But I similarly come from a water background. I've lived in, I was born and lived in Durban for 25 years and mm -hmm. uh, spent my childhood life surfing and diving. So wow. I have no uh, fear of the water. And I and can see. <laughs> when you speak with so much confidence, I wish I was you though. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, let's speak of the event. Um, how prepared are you? Um, I mean, it's just a few weeks away and your body is it telling you that um, I'm going to reclaim this crown? Yes, so I feel very strong uh, this year. I participated in Austria at the 70.3. It's the wow. same distance, um, half Ironman. And yeah, since then I've been working hard on my bike and run. Mm. So. Yeah, I think this year I will manage to improve last year's time. Right. That's I'm the goal. I'm <laughs> expecting you've already thought of the answer. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yes, mm -hmm. um, I feel usually the same when I go to Sandman. Mm -hmm. At this time of the year, you've done other races throughout the year. It's very difficult to have your primary race at the end of the year because your body cannot keep up with 12, 15 hours of training for a whole year up mm -hmm. to December. Mm -hmm. um, but the Sandman is a very electric event, so I'll not um, miss it for anything. No. Um, I, feel, I feel good. I've got enough base to work off. Um, I've had a bit of a slow go after an event in October, but I feel as good as, as I've ever been. As good as you've ever been. Yes. Um, any competitors um, that you probably enjoy competing against or you feel that um, gives you that challenge to or 
pushes you to the edge yes. in such competition. Yes, that, that, is, that is what I strive for. I, mm. It's not fun doing an event without competition. Yeah. Not that that's the case. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to sound like that, but uh, my friend Jan Louis mm -hmm. always puts up a big fight in the swim. Um, but like Yvonne said, this year we've got JP Berger and Konrad Stoltz who have not raced against and those guys have been to serious events around the world mm. and have spent parts of their life exclusively doing professional triathlon. So I don't expect to have mm. um, the same ease that I had last year. That you had last year. Um, if you were to sit at home and motivate someone to try this kind of events, um, just in short, what would you say? I mean, I'm sure it's a quite an exciting sport. Yeah, mm. I would say um, if doing all three events as a triathlon is maybe too daunting, um, mm. then try off and do it as a team. A lot mm. of people start off as a team, um, swim or run. And then um, I, have, I also know quite a few athletes who then they want to do it, but they're scared of it. And they're then it, yeah. um, all you need to do is motivate them to start small. Do the mini or do the sprint and don't be ashamed if you have to walk on the run because we all do it. We all do it. All right. You've heard it from the champions. Well, it is. it has been a privilege having you in studio and I'm wishing you all the best of luck. Thank Maybe you. Thank you. you can go and claim, reclaim your titles and crowns. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. Well, that's all we had for you today. Goodbye. Well, we look forward to the Sandman this year. Uh, the FIFA World Cup that started on Sunday has been full of surprises. I'm sure we can all agree on that. Well, um, the Sport Trap Special World Cup segment, which began last week Monday, continues. In this segment, we'll be doing interviews and previews of the biggest football showpiece. We have Haki Chidumawe uh, to tell us more about that. Uh, stay tuned. Sport rep is joined, that is by Mamelodi Sundowns supporters club personnel, Heiki Shirumawe. Um, he's no stranger to the sport rep show. Um, this time around, he's here to speak about that is the FIFA 2022 World Cup happening in Qatar. Um, Shirumawe, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, um, one of the most important things right now is that many people are looking forward to see players perform at the level, the highest level and obviously clubs will be out there looking out to scout some players. I'm from your own side of views as a football supporter, who do you think are among the players that are going to impress at this World Cup? Um, thank you and thank you for having me. Uh, players that I, I foresee, you know, uh, will be uh, Bape. Bape has been, has been doing quite great well. I mean, for, for his club for PSG uh, and uh, the other players that I also foresee is uh, uh, the likes of uh, of Neymar. Neymar will also do well in this in this in this World Cup. One could see and uh, not also forgetting uh, Kevin De Bruyne, you know, uh, because Kevin De Bruyne has been a fantastic player. He had a fantastic season, and uh, I think he would be more of the the highlight player for me. Because I think this is this is actually his time, so to say. This is actually his way of also showing the world that he's ready for a ballad mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we 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 have um, players like um, Anthony Santos. We have um, a lot of up young players that obviously it will be their first World Cup. How do you think the pressure is going to be on them? Yeah, no, the the because I mean the good thing is that these young players. I mean, if it's their first time, you know, there will be many that will surprise us. Because why? Because uh, they've been they've been already there, you know, playing well, and uh, they have support of the experienced players. And uh, I think I think most of them partaking already in big competitions like the UEFA, uh, Champions League, and, and so forth. Uh, I think World Cup will just be a, a, a cherry on top of the cake for them, you know, because it will be a platform given to them actually to. To, to showcase their, their talents. Okay, and another thing is um, 
players like um, Firmino will be missing the World Cup and other players. Um, emotionally, how do you think um, this works towards the players and just how do you feel about this and what's your view on players just missing out the World Cup, just not being selected for the team? We speak of um, players in the England squad as well that didn't make it, Ivan Tony then. Mm. So it's quite a number of them. Yeah, quite a number of them that are, that are unfortunate because for most, you know, this was supposed to be their last World Cup, you know, because others are already, have been already going for the time, like the Sergio Ramos that were left, uh, Firmino, just to mention a few, you know, I mean, it's, it's somewhere where we're looking at this World Cup as a way of going to hang their boots, you know, uh, the likes of Tony Cruz, uh, no, <laughs> no, it's fine. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> no, and if you if you look at a player like um, Danny Alves, who will be playing his probably final World Cup, how impressed are you that he's even part of the Brazil team? No, um, one one. I mean, Danny Alves has been a, has been a evergreen. You know, you call those players the type of the evergreens, and uh, I think this should be a World Cup where he's gonna actually. How you know his, uh, his, his his Brazilian team to to give that experience and to and to motivate players and I think for the longest he will want to actually cleanse this World Cup. You know? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Shidemal. It's no, been a privilege you. having you. Thank you, thank you for having me. Okay. Well, you heard it from Haki there, that is. Well, after the break, we have Ari Okad with the latest on international news. As from me, Brian Monango, it's goodbye. Good day, everyone. Time for international sports news and starting off with golf news. So two tournaments being played at the moment, one on the DP World Tour, that is in Southern Africa, and one on the Australian Tour, that is the Australian PGA. Let's start closer to home, the Joburg Open, and the first round leader he is um, still a leader after the second round, that is Dan Bradbury of England. He played the first round in minus eight and uh, also followed it up in the second round with a minus five score for a total of minus 13, leading at the Houghton Golf Club, that is a Joburg Open, part of the DP Tour and also the Sunshine Tour. A few South Africans also challenging. It is Christian beside note that had a better second round. The first round was minus three then came in with a second round of minus seven. He's totally 10 under par, three shots behind Bradbury. And also Daniel van Tonde, a very good second round of eight under par, and his total is minus 10, a few shots behind Dan Bradbury. In Australia, it's the Australian PGA being played at the Queen Queensland Country Club, a golf club, and high profile player they're playing is Cameron Smith of Australia. He's number three in the world, currently also playing on the Live Tour initiative, and not playing in many tournaments outside the Live Golf initiative. And uh, he did uh, well on the second round, the second round of uh, six under par for uh, Cameron Smith. He's got a total of minus nine. He's just a uh, one shot behind the leader at the moment, that is Jason Shrivener. He is from Australia. He had the rounds of minus six and minus four for a total of 10 under par. Mark Leishman uh, uh, battling a little bit. He's one of the other profile players there. After two rounds, he's one under par. And then Adam Scott, um, he won the Masters before, uh, the US Masters. And uh, Adam Scott is at a total of four under par after the two rounds. The final round will be played on Sunday. And now for cricket news, it is India and New Zealand that play uh, ODI One Day International Series of three games. The first one was played at Eden Park, that is the rugby stadium actually in Auckland. Short boundary, so it was high scores, but it was New Zealand that won by seven wickets. India batted first, they scored 306 for the loss of seven wickets. 
and uh, it was New Zealand that made the runs quite comfortably with 17 balls to spare almost three overs. And it was uh, Tom Lehman that scored 145 runs of just 104 deliveries for New Zealand to win by seven wickets. In the innings of Tom Lathan, he scored uh, 19 uh, boundaries and he also had five sixes. The second ODI between the two countries will be played on Sunday, uh, that will be in Hamilton, and the third and last ODI, the 50 over ODI, will be played on Wednesday, that is in Christchurch. Now continuing international sports news with tennis news, it is a Davis Cup men's team tournament that's uh, going to be concluded on Sunday. It uh, was uh, quarterfinals time, in the quarterfinals it's Italy that beat the USA by 2-1 and it's Canada that was too strong for Germany also by 2-1. So Italy and Germany will play in the one semi-final um, and uh, the other semi-final will be between Australia that beat Netherlands and they will play Croatia and it was Croatia that beat the home country Spain. Um, in the other quarterfinals, uh, the, the tournament uh, is being concluded in Malaga in Spain. And the final of the Davis Cup will be played on Sunday. Closing off today's international sports news, it's rugby news. And it is Australia that play an important rugby test against Wales on Saturday. And the Wales uh, announced that they have a new centre that's making his debut. He's just 20 years old and his name is Joe Hawkins. And he's on debut because he's replacing injured Owen Watkins. And uh, uh, Joe Hawkins, uh, he plays for the Ospreys team. He brought him came for Wales. Uh, they lost the previous weekend to Georgia. That was quite a big surprise. They lost to Georgia by 13 points to 12. And also eight months ago, they also lost uh, to Italy for the first time at home in their history. It is Wayne Pivak. He is the coach of Wales. He's under pressure. Obviously, there's a World Cup coming up in 2023 in France, but uh, it is Wales that's not doing well lately, and uh, Wayne Pivak is under pressure. He will probably, if he loses to Australia, there's a good chance that he might be replaced even before the World Cup in France. Alan Wynne Jones, very experienced lock. He played many tests for Wales and he also was a captain of the British and Irish Lions in the recent tour to South Africa. He's back in starting position at lock and uh, so that will definitely strengthen the Wales team. That kickoff time is uh, tomorrow afternoon on Saturday. Uh, that will be at 5 p.m. That's international sports news for today. Hope you have a great sport day and a sport weekend and we talk again on Monday. Goodbye.